members, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing all right. How are you today? Pretty good. We might actually get that cold snap that we didn't get last week. <laughs> you think so? I hope so. Uh, it's beautiful. They're still out predicting there. it. They're, oh, are they? Yeah. Well, I mean, as far as I know, I, no, when I, I looked, looked yesterday, I think, and they said that it was actually going to get into the upper 40s this week. Really? At night. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that would be sweet. Well, it's beautiful out there today. It is. It's a nice day. <laughs> a lot of yard work calling me that I probably should be doing. Yeah, well, right. it should st- it should be nice for a while. It's not supposed to rain again until sometime next week. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Get some stuff done. Um, this, is my t- this is a good time of year for me to get stuff like that done because I've got two big buildings behind my house, mm-hmm. and like now's the time to get out there and like do the spring cleaning Yeah, because once once that warm weather really sets in, there ain't no going out then there and cleaning. Then there's spiders well, there's, and wasps. Th- there's spiders and wasps, but <laughs> the bigger thing is just the heat, <clears throat> trying to work out in those buildings. Oh, yeah, I bet. Um, well, one of them, like... The the shed thing opens up all over the place. It seems yeah. like you could get they, some good airflow through that. They both open up pretty good, but they get well. But so the other high. one only opens on one side, unless you added something. No, no, no. I haven't added anything. But there's two windows too. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't do it. Well, that but that one has a metal roof, right? And that metal <laughs> roof, dude, it yeah. is like a scorcher, man. Yeah, I'd actually talked about um, when we were hanging Selling out it there. Selling into sauna space, <laughs> you could. Yeah. Um, when I um, when we were hanging out out there a lot, putting a sprinkler on top of it mm. just to try to cool down that. Yeah, that because if you cool down the roof, the rest of the 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 occupying space would be fine. Yeah, I miss the whiskey and foosball days, actually. Yeah, I still got the foosball table, man. Uh, is it still in good shape, or is it all warped and it's stuff? It's been so long there? since I played on that, I couldn't oh, yeah. tell you. Okay. So, I still got the I don't, I don't I still play a lot got of foosball. foosball table, too. It's sitting in my <laughs> garage. It's yeah. become like a workbench, Dude, which I is love really playing sad. some foosball, man. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm all about it. I kind of miss that game. Yeah. That was my college game. Yeah. A lot of foosball. It's um, fun. And high school, actually. You know, okay, so foosball started with me. I, I went to a boarding school my junior and senior year. Yeah. And uh, they had a recreation area like any college would. And it had the same games that any college recreation area would, which was ping pong, foosball, and pool. Nice. Right. So um, I played a little bit of pool and I played a whole lot of ping pong. Yeah. Because I'd been playing ping pong for a couple of years because I'd worked as a lifeguard here and uh, as part of the swim and racket club. And the swim and racket club had a ping pong table downstairs. Yeah. Um, and so when it rained in the afternoon in the summer here, which is like a every lot. day, <laughs> yeah. uh, we'd go play ping pong. Yeah. And um, so <laughs> I played a lot of ping pong before I went up there. And so that was really my, my game. My buddy Jim, uh, Jim and I would play ping pong and I would beat him. And um, and then he would drag me over to the foosball table and, <laughs> and you whoop would... me. <laughs> oh, Absolutely really? whoop So he me. whooped you in both then? No, I, I'd beat him in ping pong. Oh, you beat him in ping pong. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah my bad. Um, and so finally one day I was like, look, Jim, like I understand why you want to bring me over here to the foosball table after I beat you in ping pong so that you can beat me. But <laughs> yeah. the difference here is that you know how to play ping pong and I don't know how to play foosball. So <laughs> if we're going to keep doing this, you're going to have to teach me to play foosball. <laughs> All right. Show me some moves, right? Yeah. So he did. Um, and then when I went up to college, uh, I, I dominated the foosball. house foosball table. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Cause Jim was really good. And well, then uh, I went and visited. So the, the crazy part, though, is I went. Uh, Jim went to uh, Greensboro um, for college. Yeah. Um, and so I went and visited him and another friend of mine from high school that had also gone there. Uh, I went and visited him one weekend my freshman year. And I'm, you know, I'm fresh off of just like playing a lot of foosball and and just killing it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I go up there and and I was definitely better than I had been in high school. Yeah. And. Uh, I got up there and they had a foosball table in his dorm, um, not in the room, but in the in the common area. Yeah, uh, of the dorm. And so we went and played some foosball, and he'd gotten a whole lot better too. <laughs> he had gotten better too. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's how that usually whole works. A whole lot better. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, and actually, he beat me worse than in high school. Well, that's one of those games that you you really only are getting better unless you're playing people better than you. Yeah. Like that, that's, there's a lot of games like that, but that's definitely one. You don't really, 
improve unless you've got a good competition. That, there's some truth to that. I mean, you certainly improve faster when you're playing with people better than you because I mean, yeah. you're, you're learning moves that they do too. Right? Exactly. Like, but yeah. um, <laughs> we're starting off with a long discussion of foosball. This is funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the, you, it is a game that you can get better at playing by, by yourself even. You think so? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just like practicing your... Learning to manipulate the ball. Yeah. Um, Passing it around just to yourself. Like, uh, you know, you set the defense down in a particular way and you you try Try to to maneuver around it. it Yeah. yeah. I can see that. But like Um, I say, I've definitely. Because a lot of the shots, especially on the offensive end, are muscle memory. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, there's something to that for sure. Um, I mean, that's because I'm pretty. The more you do it, the faster you get. And the faster you get, the, the less likely the other person defend. is going to be yep. able to react in time. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I miss playing <clears throat> that. We got we to do it sometimes. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We do. We both, you know, have, we both have tables, so. Yeah. For, forget this podcast. Let's just stop <laughs> Let's now. Just we'll go play go foosball play the rest football. of the evening. <laughs> hey, don't tip me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get into it. All right. What you got? <laughs> um, We got a few things. There's. Maybe we should start with the Moscow concert attacks because that's yeah. the oldest thing here, and we just didn't okay. discuss it last time. Yeah, um, I don't even have a whole lot to say about it um, because there's still not a lot of certainty about what who's responsible. Yeah, ultimately. Yeah, um, I think that there's good evidence that there was at least coordination with Ukraine. Yeah. Um. ISIS K, there is some accusation that there's just because they shifted their targets over the years from um, U.S., Israel, Western powers in the Middle East to China, Russia, Iran. Um, there has been some accusations that ISIS K works with the CIA. Yeah, uh, and I'm sure, it's all just a coincidence. And there's <laughs> well, there's like a historical relation that it may have originated with the CIA because yeah. this is in this is an Afghanistan um, part of ISIS. So yeah, you remember the the CIA was supporting Afghan um, mujahideen against the Russians in the 80s, and so yeah. Yeah. you know the that doesn't necessarily mean that they're still working with them now, but. Like a lot of these guys, there's a history there. There's definitely documented evidence that people that are at the top of the, um, I guess the, the organization were CIA trained. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. So it could, you know, who knows? I, it's hard to say. the The thing that I mostly want to point out about it is that if Ukraine, if the Ukraine government um, directed it, or if the CIA obviously directed it, <laughs> right. um, that that means that your tax dollars as a U.S. citizen were used towards a terrorist attack, yeah, targeting civilians in yeah. Russia, yeah, unacceptable, absolutely, yeah. So, <clears throat> and while we're on that point, I guess uh, probably a more, um ostentatious version of that is uh israel over the last week yeah um there was a a bombing of the iranian embassy in syria which embassies have historically been kind of sacrosanct um like you don't target embassies well and a, a big reason for that is is it's really no different legally speaking at least as i understand it to attack an embassy versus attacking like their the actual country, country. yeah, yeah. You're like right. i mean it's the but that was always my understanding was both of those are pretty well interchangeable yes um israel attacking the iranian embassy is tantamount to israel attacking iran yeah so directly yeah. Um, they say that they killed uh, an IRGC general. Um, that's the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps. Yeah. Um, which is like their special forces kind of. Yeah. Um, and uh, several other IRGC members as well as embassy staff and you yeah. know so on. But the the main point is that well, I I can't remember the specifics now, but there was um a conflict during which people in the the 
national the national embassy the country's embassy i can't remember what country it might have been iran actually but, but whatever it doesn't matter um in uh england were using the embassy as a base to fire on like british police and so <laughs> forth oh wow um and the british didn't attack the embassy yeah because embassies are sacrosanct yeah <laughs> like this is not something this is do. an important part of how the 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 modern world works because it is the center of diplomacy. Yeah. 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 That's the idea, at least. Um, I mean, that's where Assange huddled up. And... Yeah. Well, but then the British did go into that embassy <laughs> in the <Yeah>. end. Um, <laughs> it, although, they, I guess they were invited in by the Ecuadorian. I was going to say, Ecuadorian, didn't Ecuador... I thought yeah. that they had struck a deal with Ecuador to, to release it, to get yeah. him out. So. In the end, that yeah, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. Um, so it's not I'll, like they just knocked down the door and went in. Right. Although I think that if Ecuador was to do it right, they should have gotten their own security staff to like carry him out, essentially. Yeah. Um, it would have been a bad look for Ecuador, though, maybe. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> this way you can kind of blame the UK. Yeah. But uh, beyond the attacking the Iranian embassy, they also bombed a, um, a food aid convoy, killing this three Brits and an American... Yeah. Um, it was clearly marked. They knew exactly what they were doing. Well, the story so is that they followed them for an hour and a half. They did. So I was going to say um, the reporting I had seen was that that they were in contact with the, what's the Israeli Defense Force, the IDF? That's it, the Israeli Defense Force. Okay, yeah. They were in contact with them like the entire day. Mm-hmm. Like that they that they were telling them where they were going and what they were doing and that just this just kind of happened out of nowhere. Yeah, the, the convoy was approved. The route was approved. It was all known in advance. After the first missile hit, they contacted the IDF, said, you're firing on us. This is what we are. And yeah. then they fired two more missiles. Wow. Like, that's insane. Yeah, they destroyed every vehicle in the convoy, and they did it in a in a very measured way. It, in, not in the sense of, like, this was very moderate of them. No, yeah. <laughs> um, like, uh, but, I mean, the, it was... Like they Clearly went out to destroy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so they hit the first truck. People transferred to the other two trucks. They hit a second truck. People transferred to the last truck, and they hit the third truck. Yeah, just boom, boom, they, boom. They did it in such a way to kill everybody in that convoy. Yeah. And well, the insane thing, of course, to, to me is, once again, um, an American, an, an innocent American was killed Yeah. that was just there trying to deliver food aid in Gaza. Yeah. And... Our executive branch said, well, Israel didn't really do anything wrong. <laughs> Seriously? That's mm-hmm. insane. Yeah. They were like, well, they didn't, you know, break any, any international laws or anything. Yeah. So wow. we're okay with this. So, we're okay so with we're, this. So we're just, that. Yeah, that's just condoning it then. Yeah. Well, and the other thing I just wanted to say was this same group, which I can't remember the name of the group, but they had also, they had, they have been doing aid for both sides. Mm -hmm. They have been giving aid to the Israelis and the Palestinians. So it's not like that this was like a one-sided group that you could make some kind of argument that they were doing something they shouldn't have been doing. Right. Like they were, they were 100% legit, like, Mm -hmm. and everybody knew that. Yeah. The claim from Israel is that they, uh, they had an armed terrorist with them. But he wasn't there. Yeah. Well, coincidentally. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, who who knows? I, there's certainly reason that um, aid workers might hire on an armed guard at this point. Well, yeah. Can you blame <laughs> them? Like, but, but there wasn't an armed guard with them at, yeah. at the time of this. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm just flabbergasted by our government not doing more to... To condone. hold yeah. Israel accountable for killing an innocent American citizen that was just trying to deliver aid. Yeah. And if uh, if you don't think that the U.S. was somehow involved through Ukraine or whatever um, in the Moscow uh, concert attack, and so you're not concerned about your tax money being used towards terrorism there— your tax money was absolutely used to kill an American citizen oh, in yeah. Israel. Guess who paid for them bombs? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, there ain't no question about that. <laughs> so I just don't know what to think of this. No. And I'm I'm still really troubled by the fact that there isn't a single legitimate, I guess you would say, or serious presidential candidate that is yeah. opposed to this war. Yeah. 
No, there's not. The best we've gotten actually is Donald Trump saying, we'll just finish it quick. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> which is which is not great, but you're right, like that is the best we've got, and like I say. Yeah. No, none of the other ones, I mean RFK, um Bush, I mean not Bush. Oh shit. Biden. I'm, I'm Biden, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really going back. But yeah, no, it's crazy, man. Well, in the and still the administration is planning leaks saying that Biden's really upset with Netanyahu and so forth. But the truth is that our government's not doing anything about this. No, no, there's no, I mean, especially Biden, like the, the Biden administration is like, I mean, they're hung because they're, um, part of their base is against this, Mm -hmm. but that's the only reason that, that they're, they're even pretending to have any kind of wishy washy about it. Yeah. Imagine, imagine if RFKJ came out opposed to this war. Well, if he, if he, if was he had felt the same the way Ukraine about... Against the Ukraine war, against the Is- yep. Israel-Gaza war, um, yeah. and you're, you're was about, uh, anti-vaccine um, uh, mandates and lockdowns. Well, basically, if he had all... If, I mean, he has all those positions, but one. Like, the, yeah. the, um, the Israeli war is the only position that he's really bad on, but he's so bad on it that you can't... It's unforgivable. Like, yeah. Well, and it doesn't create a real um, alternative. Exactly. That, that's the that's yeah. kind of the problem. Like the, um, I suppose it was always true. I, I feel like there are enough conservatives that would be turned by the Israel Palestine thing um, that he could pull enough votes away from Trump with the vaccine stuff. Yeah. Um, that if he was on the right side of Israel, Palestine, that he could definitely pull enough votes away from the Biden camp to be a real contender. I think he could. I mean, if, if he held those positions. But, I mean, he just, yeah. That yeah. one position is basically, as far as I has can submarine see. His submarine this campaign. His this campaign, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Well, he also picked up the... Um, the the money woman as his <laughs> VP candidate. I can't remember her name, but the Shanahan something Shanahan. Yeah, um, the, I, the Asian I, Shanahan. I'm yeah, pretty sure. I haven't looked into it, but apparently she has some strange religious views too. Oh yeah, she's like a, a druid or something. Druid, that's what it is. Yeah. I couldn't remember the name of it. Yeah. Which I so I know nothing about druids. Like I don't know anything about this. Well, nobody else does either. It, it, yeah. It's it's a religion that had to be reinvented, like witchcraft. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. It's it's not something that um that has. I mean, I guess it probably has had some kind of like semi continuous uh, existence over the millennia. Yeah. But the truth is that like modern drew. Druidism is probably mostly made up. Yeah. I mean, not like all religions, I, I mean, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, I don't mean to make it sound like that is just, it's just like a complete fiction in terms of what they decided the beliefs and practices were. There's like some evidence of what, yeah. you know, what remains, but like we like witchcraft, it was like reconstructed from ancient stuff and not something that was a, a continuous practice that people, yeah. That was passed down. That has in been that passed yeah. from from group to group to group. Right. Yeah. I gotcha. So. Well, b- but anyway, but the point I was going to make with that is like that completely like the the idea that um he's going to pull Trump voters now is pretty well gone. Um the the amount of Trump support that he's going to pull with that VP pick, like he's completely flipped that switch. Like he'll just be pulling from Biden now. Yeah, which makes me. Makes you want to put the conspiratorial hat on? Yeah, it does a, a little bit. Cause, <laughs> or actually, it's more like it makes me want to put take the conspiratorial hat off. Oh, really? Because I yeah. really thought that he was he was more likely to pull more Trump voters than Biden voters. Well, he was up until that VP pick. I think that that was that was a true that was true. Yeah. But um, the the Trump supporters will not vote for somebody with those type of religious views. <laughs> like yeah, it's just, probably not. Really. It, it's just not going to happen. And I, I suspect that it was a choice of um, economic convenience. Yeah. Like well, he's got a lot of money. He's got to get on the ballot. And he, it, I mean, it just, that's going to take a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think you're right about that. I think that's, that's ultimately what drew his decision. It's unfortunate. Oh, well. Yeah. Maybe 2028, he'll get his act together. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> 
I don't know, because I like the guy, but when, the, you know, because in twenty twenty eight he'll be running against Biden again because Trump will already already served his second term. I mean, assuming that he gives up office at the end of it. <laughs> oh, you think he's uh, going to give up power? <laughs> of course, of course. Like, right. how could you not believe that? Because yeah. of what happened his first term, <laughs> exactly when he didn't give up power. Yeah, when he literally just like went out the back door. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Biden will only be eighty seven or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right>. yeah, <laughs> or, or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah and they're, then, they're definitely not rolling him back. Yeah, out again. you know, so they'll get RFKJ versus Biden and DeSantis. <laughs> yeah, maybe or something. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, who knows, man? Okay, before <laughs> I start getting emails on that, like a lot of that was facetious. I don't expect <laughs> Biden to run again. I, yeah, right. I think DeSantis. I, I still already, question whether he's going to run this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think DeSantis will get a 2028 nod from the Republican Party. I think he screwed up this year too badly. And Yeah. I uh, mean, he just showed he doesn't have the, at least on the national stage. Um, he doesn't have the charisma. No, he, he just doesn't. Yeah. So. Oh, well. Um, in a lot of ways, I think that he's good. I think he's terrible in the thing that's most important for a president. So I'm not... You're not a I'm fan. not upset about that, <laughs> yeah. really. But He's anyway. a great governor, though. Yeah, and he should stay there. Yeah, 100%. Good for Florida. Yep. yep. Although, <laughs> he did just sign a social media ban for under 14 yep. in the state of Florida. Yep. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I, In a sense, I'm conflicted on this because I think that social media in young kids is damaging. I, like we talked, it was about a year ago um, that yep. we did almost a whole podcast on uh, operant conditioning in the context of social media and, and how, yeah. um, addictive and damaging it can be. And, uh, yeah. there's certainly plenty of, um, correlation between, uh, bad psychological issues. Uh, you got a friend over there. Hey there, buddy. <laughs> um, it, he's it, looking it, up like, where's your wife at? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what he's, he's looking for. Yeah. <laughs> where's my friend? Yeah. You're right. Um, so, yeah, there's certainly a correlation between some bad psychological issues, uh, increased depression, increased suicidality, um, increased anxiety, and uh, social media in young kids. Yeah. And you can see where it would come from. There's, of course, all the cyberbullying, which I think is just kind of... <laughs> I mean... I, I don't I don't mean to scoff at it totally because I I know that it's it can be serious because kids are susceptible to it. Yeah. But what irritates me with the bullying thing, and I just want to say this is there was a time where we used to use this phrase. You may remember it: "Sticks and stones may yeah. break my bones, but words will never hurt me." Well, but then it became words hurt, and then it became silence is violence. So. Yes, like <laughs> and, and that's literally where we're at in this country. Yeah. Like in it. Like I say, it's just, oh, that one irritates me. Like I say, I, and I'm not trying to downplay because I know like the serious effects of cyberbullying. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to like dismiss that. Yeah. But I think we can condition our kids a little better to deal with it. Exactly. Like that's, that's my argument. Well, and, and that's what I would actually say about social media generally. Yeah. Uh, I, but the important point is this, that while I think that it's probably good to keep kids, especially young kids, away from social media for as long as you can. Yeah. I don't think it's the state's responsibility. I agree. Um, um, I'm opposed to the the nanny state. Me too. And well, I think and, that and parents I'm, should I'm be able to make their own choices. Guy. Like I'm, yeah. I'm big on. I, I mean, I believe in freedom. I don't believe mm -hmm. the state is the person that gets to make those type of decisions for anybody. Yeah. Um. And the social media thing, I do think it's good to keep your kids off of as much as you can. I do think they need a fair amount. I think they need some mm -hmm. because, I mean, I just to kind of keep up with the other kids and to be part of the... I mean, you need some of that. You don't need a lot, though, <laughs> is yeah. what I would say. <laughs> and and I've got two kids, so believe me, like I'm in the thick of this right now. Yeah. So, like I say, don't... Well, when did, you, when did your youngest get on tiktok um it's been it's been a year or two a couple of years maybe so I, I couldn't like, tell you exactly so like 12 probably maybe, maybe something yeah. like that which yeah. like i say i'm not saying that's great like it's not um yeah. 
but like I, I do believe, man. Yeah, I'm a, that has I'm, to be right. I remember when she would come to dinner with us, and she would sit there like, yeah, dancing in her seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and that's <laughs> so. the thing. So particularly with TikTok, TikTok has kind of evolved because, like, when my kids were first on TikTok, it was all dance videos. Like that's all. Like they weren't consuming any real type of like information off of there. It mm. was all dance videos. Um, and that's not really what TikTok is anymore. Yeah. Um, like TikTok is like information and media. Like it's basically a form of media. Well, there's plenty of people that would swear to me that um, if your girl was Chinese, that she would have been getting educational videos back then instead of dance videos. Wow. I mean, I think it, I, I, so I'm not on TikTok. I've used tic, I've used TikTok. It's not like I'm illiterate with mm-hmm. it, but my my gauge of TikTok is I've seen half a dozen videos or so. Yeah, I mean I've seen a little <laughs> more than that, but <laughs> um, but TikTok's going to give you what you want. Like that's that's been my take on how that platform operates. Yeah, like which works. Like it, it works as far as drawing you in because whatever you're into, you're going to get a lot of it, yeah. and it well, seems to figure out pretty quick what you're into. Mm-hmm. That's my the people around me who have made that suggestion about how China's using it to dumb down America or whatever yeah, I was is uh, is um isn't it possible that America was already dumb <laughs> yes uh, i think I think you may have nailed it <laughs> <laughs> it's like isn't it possible that maybe chinese kids are looking for different things than american kids are yeah yeah absolutely and i actually think that that's more likely um no, cuz even even chinese kids in america are probably seeing more educational <laughs> stuff than right. American kids in America. No, I believe that. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, just because of the, you know, cultural values. Yeah, I mean, we're just different yeah. in that way. So, um, so I, I, I do have a problem with the uh, the state stepping in to the role of the parent and yeah. deciding for families what kids should be permitted. And I know we were talking the other night about uh, drinking. Um, and mm. kids and drinking. Oh, kids and drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, I was like, man, like, we talk about drinking all the time. <laughs> I understand that the laws are out there about this, but I should be able to give my kid wine or whatever at dinner. Yeah. If I choose to. Yeah. Under your supervision. Exactly. Yeah. Not, I, not buy them a bottle of whiskey and send them out <laughs> in the woods or whatever. Yeah, like, right. That's, that's bad parenting. But, yes. Uh, um, all the same. Actually, I should probably be up permitted to do it. Yeah. I I mean, I don't <laughs> disagree with you per se. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I, in a way I do. Like there, there's definitely a difference between, like you're saying, bad parenting mm-hmm. and like giving your kid a glass of wine with dinner or something. Yeah. Um, but just because there are bad parents out there doesn't mean that the government gets to take on that role. It's a fine line. Um, I'll say that. The... It shouldn't be government. I'm yeah. not saying that there shouldn't be somebody that steps in, but it shouldn't be government. It should yeah. be community, church, whatever. Yeah. Um, the problem is that we don't have any real community anymore. Yeah. Well, like, and that's, I the have government met is the my community. neighbors. Yeah. But I don't. I don't really know my neighbors. I've I've yeah. met my neighbors. Yeah. I mean, I would say that's And not all of them, (laughs) actually. (laughs) I mean, I'm the same way. I barely know my neighbors. But it is strange because, and I I bet you can attest to this too, like I've lived in a handful of places with my parents growing up. We didn't move Mm -hmm. a lot, but we moved like three times. Yeah. Everywhere we moved, my parents knew and were very close with the neighbors. Yeah. Like that's, I think that may be a generational thing mm-hmm. um, because like I say, I mean, that was absolutely. It's that damn social media. It's isolated us physically. Maybe, but you're not on social media. So what's your excuse, Mike? <laughs> that's why I'm not a, I'm, I'm, I'm a self-isolationist. <laughs> you're self-isolationist. <laughs> well, in the past though, have you been more social with your neighbors in the other places you've lived? Um, well, yes and no. When I was living in Atlanta, it was apartments duplexes so forth so yeah when i was I in those situations kind of kind of force it yeah because when I, was I was in those I situations i knew apartment. the people around me like i absolutely when we um, lived in the apartment like i knew everybody that lived in my building yeah and when i was in the duplex i uh like hung out and was friends with the people on the other side of the duplex yeah 
once again, you're kind of forced into that. I mean, you didn't have yeah, to be that it, close it, with them, but like, yeah, I mean, you could avoid it. Yeah, like, you, you yeah. don't have to. You don't have to know them, but they were cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that was my experience in the apartment. Like I say, the guy it's that like lived one above of them me was a musician. I'd like go over there and play guitar. Like, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. There's definitely something to that, though. Yeah. Um, but the community is, it's not, the government is the community now. Mm-hmm. Like in the scenario you're laying out where like another group would step in and be like, no, you can't do this. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I'll tell you honestly, the, this residential area that I live in, yeah. there's been a lot of push over mm-hmm. the last couple of years that I've seen to create more of a community within this giant residential. Uh, like, yeah, this, I think this is the biggest residential area in Alabama still, isn't it? It, it was at one point. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, and in fact, you may have seen when you were driving in here today, there was a sign up, uh, you know, a garden club. Um, but everybody was invited to something today, I, oh, I yeah. think, um, at the 19th hole. Yeah. No, I didn't see, I didn't pay and, attention. Um, you know, I, I've been getting, I've gotten emails about this, uh, like online group that organizes physical, Meetups. Meetups and things like that for the this community, for the yeah. residential area. Yeah. Um, so Stuff like that's cool. Yeah. I, I should get involved. I'm yeah. just like, y'all the, have a that pretty... one it's like, uh, I have to sign up online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But y'all have a pretty strict HOA in here too, though. Yeah, we do. I'm not a big I, fan well, of HOA. See, but here's the, the funny thing is that the, this... This community, such as it is, yeah. isn't really a big fan of the HOA either. Yeah, well, maybe it's time <laughs> to bring down the HOA. Yeah, sounds like somebody needs to run on a a, um, a campaign of like bring down the HOA. Oh, they are. Oh, are they? Oh, yeah. You every, need to go every vote. time. Every time um, elections come around, I get flooded <laughs> with uh, yeah. Let, these people are all crooks. Let's replace them all. You know, it's yeah, yeah. just like that's any that's other. different from destroying the whole thing. Though. Yeah, this. It's just like any other government body, I guess. I yeah, ex- exactly. Uh, That's yeah. the whole point. <laughs> it's the um, whole problem. So, uh, I, I mean, I, I guess we were talking about like, okay, if you want to give your kid wine at dinner, you should be able to do that. Yeah. And you said to me. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I said. You said, uh, yeah. Oh, my, that if my you did talkative that. kid. Oh, no. Yeah. You're talking. <laughs> well, no, that's exactly what I said. Yeah. Because yeah. you know that kid's going to go run to school and tell every other kid. And then, then you're going to have DHR beating down your door. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what will happen. Like, yeah. If, yeah. Depending on your kid. Like, I'm Statue sure. Statue limitations is far long since passed. And I'm a, a grown up now. So, but my parents gave me um, little, like, half shots of this coffee liqueur yeah um when i was really young yeah um and i would just like dip my finger in it and like yeah. you know i thought it was tasty yeah it was tia maria actually it's puerto rican liqueur yeah. well i um, mean as a kid my dad would always when i asked or whenever mm-hmm. you know but periodically would let me take a sip of his beer yeah beer was a punishment but, in my house but i hated it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's exactly beer was a punishment in my house it was like well you can either finish your vegetables or take a sip of my beer <laughs> yeah like, oh, i'll eat the vegetables <laughs> exactly yeah no, I was the same way. Still kind of am. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I still don't drink beer. Yeah. Um, so. Maybe because of that. Maybe that was good parenting. Maybe it was good parenting. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, make you uh, just averse to beer generally. Yeah. Um, but there, there's certainly been a lot of evidence that if you are brought up with alcohol, then you learn how to use it responsibly. You yeah. know, it's effects on you. Whereas there's a lot more problems with the kids that go to college and are... Fu- finally able to access alcohol that have never been able to before. Yeah. The same is true with drugs and whatnot too. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I ran with a pretty rowdy crew in high school mm. and um, none of us have had that, the type of issues that I've seen from people who didn't run with that type of crew. Yeah. Like when, once they got out of that, their parents' house and were out on their own, it was like, man, like just going to do whatever and do anything and everything. Mm-hmm. And um, just not being able to handle that as an adult. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You um, you learn to respect the things. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's good to to get that experience at a young age. Mm-hmm. Like I say, like a, a teenage teenager is kind of the age to kind of dabble with that type of thing. You don't yeah. want to go down the rabbit wow. hole, but. <laughs> I mean, your, your brain's still forming though. Like there, I don't know. There's, there's questions about that, but I I think more than anything, especially if you're talking about, you know, parents serving alcohol to their kids at dinner and stuff like that. 
um, you've taken away the forbidden fruit part of it. Yeah. And, and that's a big part of the draw to kids that have never had access oh, is yeah. this like forbidden fruit thing. And so they go overboard. Yeah. Um, but th- the point I want to get around to though here is that it's, it's still not the place of the government. Bad parenting is not, does not excuse the government to step into the home. Yeah. I would agree with that. Um, and if we had, you know, better community, so we may not have communities with our neighbors, but still a lot of people have communities with various organizations that they're involved with. Yeah. Church, rotary clubs, whatever. Yeah. Where people well, can those, see. Those aren't the only communities though, Mike. <laughs> like there's drug communities and, and sure. bar communities. Sure. And, and like all of the, all of those are, and we really live in an age where you get to choose your community. So yeah, the stuff you listed off, those are more the mainstream legitimate communities, but like there's also the, the more seedy communities. And, you know, we live in a time where you kind of get to choose where you want to go. Yeah. Um, I was I'm hoping to look up real quick. Uh, what kind of community are you looking for? Well, I was looking for a <laughs> quote actually. Yeah. Um, because I think that it's that it fits. Yeah. Here we are. Um, so Robert Heinlein, this is actually a quote that I have paraphrased for a long time. Now I have the actual quote in front of me, <laughs> so it'll be easier. Yeah. Um, it is a truism that almost any sect, cult, or religion will leg- legislate its creed into law if it acquires the political power to do so. No. And so I, I just have a problem with legislation of morality. Yeah. No, I agree. Because not everybody agrees. Yeah. No, absolutely. On what appropriate morality is. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's some basics that we can all agree on. Yeah. But whether you serve your kids alcohol when they're young isn't part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't steal, don't murder, you know, those I, kind of things are pretty I standard think the Ten everywhere. Commandments is pretty solid, actually. Well, but there's a whole lot in there even that, I mean, the first four commandments are about uh, about God. They aren't yeah. even about how you interact with people. It's, you know, yeah. no graven images, no God before me. Um, yeah. Well, all of those are good, too, but... <laughs> well, but not everybody agrees on who that God is. <laughs> well... <laughs> You better get in line, is um, all I can tell you. You know, honor your father and your mother are a good thing, but are you going to put somebody in jail for not? Maybe. No, I'm picking. I, yeah. I, obviously, I'm being facetious. You know, and I I've, I, have a, a real issue with adultery. Yeah. But are you going to put somebody in jail for that? There's been times where they have. Maybe. I don't know. There's definitely been I don't punish- think in this country. <laughs> not in this country, yeah. Yeah. Um, you're more likely to get put in jail for uh, um, relations with somebody of a different race in this country than for adultery. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Which is also ridiculous. Um, but, and I understand the purpose of these things, yeah. like, uh, pr- particularly adultery. I mean, I, I studied anthropology. Um, now, I did physical anthropology primarily, but I did plenty of cultural stuff while I was you know, going after my degree because there are only so many physical anthropology courses you can take. <laughs> yeah. You have to get so many credits in anthropology, but, um, you know, the, there's nothing, nothing more disruptive to a small scale foraging culture yeah. than adultery. Yeah. Like, I mean, I believe because it. everybody is kind of interdependent. Yeah. Um, and there, it just creates a social rift that is hard to mend. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why there are really serious consequences for adultery in small scale cultures. I mean, yeah. adultery is punishable by death in a lot of small scale cultures. Like you really want to avoid this because this <laughs> yeah. can, this can make mean the difference between several people starving yeah. or not. Yeah. Um, just this conflict that it creates within the group, within your group. Yeah. Yeah. So I understand it, but I don't approve of that as a, you know, yeah. as a cultural moray. Okay. That's, that's one thing as a, a legislated, um, Law, yeah. it's something different. No, I agree. For the most part. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So I'm I'm not real I'm not real thrilled about the Santas. It just seems to me that his idea he's not he's not really a free society governor. No, like there were some things that he was really good on, 
Uh, of course, my problem at the national level is that he's a big believer in the security state. And this is actually an example of that, I suppose. It is. Um, yeah. That he thinks that the government has the right because they think they know what's best for your kids to step into the home and make that decision for you. Yeah. Well, I mean... Like one hundred percent, he's not a libertarian. Like, oh, yeah. like he's he he's definitely a believer, and and he's. I'm trying to think of other examples, but there's quite a few where he's legislated stuff where it's like we're going to use the government to force you to do X, Y, or Z. Yeah, because we think that's what's because best. we think that's what's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and I, I'm definitely can't support that. No. Yeah. Um. Well, so let's let's hit the Dollar Tree thing, and then if we have time, we'll talk about Apple, and if not, then we'll talk about that next time. Yeah, um, I did get in a big argument with somebody at my office this week about uh, antitrust legislation. About, oh yeah, about Apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean not about Apple specifically, about antitrust legislation generally. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about the Dollar Tree thing because yeah. I feel like you have probably <laughs> some things to say about this. So yeah. the the big news was that Dollar Tree has increased their maximum price from $5 to $7. And this is obviously because they're catering to more high-end, higher-income people. <laughs> it has nothing to do with inflation, of course. I love that that's the storyline because it just it could not be further from the truth. Like that's like These stores are not catering to a higher... I mean, it is funny, though, because even... Like all of these comp- like dollar type companies, they always want to say that like that that's the like we're gonna bring in like like this different type of merchandise to cater to this higher end person, um, but that's that's never really what it is, you know. I mean, it's just like the the prices are increasing because of inflation and the dollars mm-hmm. like losing value, all of that stuff, all the stuff we talk about all the time. Yeah, like that's what's really going on here. Um, it's, it's wild. And something that, um, I was actually thinking about today is like, I remember as a kid, like going to the dollar store or whatever. And even as like a young child thinking like, how is the store going to make it when, uh, cause even as a kid, I knew like inflation was a thing. Like I didn't know exactly what you call it, but I mean, you knew you, that prices increased knew, over time. Yeah. Prices increase over time. It's like, what's the store going to do in 10, 20 years when it has to, like it, things eventually have to cost more than a dollar here, you know? Yeah. So, and we're kind of living through that. We're like the dollar store just isn't the dollar store anymore, you know? Yeah. So. Um, it used to be the, the five and dime. Now it's going to just going to be the five and 10, but it's going to be dollars. <laughs> dollars. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, well and they have those too. So yeah. yeah. The, What's the, I forget the name of it. The, the five and 10 store. No, no, no. But there's, um, oh, you've got one. Uh, in the little strip mall up there. I cannot remember the name of it, though. But everything's like $5. Like, it's like a $5 store. Well, it used to be the dollar store, though. Yeah, but it, um, it's a different company, though. I'm oh. tra- I can't think of the name of it, though. I, yeah, I don't, know what you're, so, I don't know what you're talking about. I can't. No, I, I, I haven't shopped there. I'm too high in. <laughs> you're too that. high in. There's <laughs> some pretty cool stuff in there for five bucks. <laughs> I, no. I, I mean, I, st- I shop at the Dollar General on the corner here. Yeah, um, but Dollar I, Generals I shop there are, a lot. Dollar Generals are different though. Like they're they're more of a every they call it Dollar General because it's everything's generally like a that used to be the thing. It's generally a dollar. It's not. Yeah. It's never been like the dollar store. Yeah. So that's never been their shtick. Okay. Well, um, yeah, it's mostly the the three dollar general. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Uh, uh, but. The it is funny to me that they're trying to say that like the idea that they're trying to cater to a higher end customer by raising their prices, their maximum price from five to seven dollars. Yeah. It's just insane. Like that, that, that you're gonna draw in those high end customers because your your um best um uh, you know, perfume is now seven dollars instead of five dollars right. when the the high end customers that they're talking about are paying thirty fifty dollars for yeah. perfumes. Yeah, you're right about thirty fifty dollars exactly. Yeah, that, that's not <laughs> you. You didn't you didn't just really make the margin. There. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's just kind of unreal. And yeah. um, the some of the reporting that I heard, they were saying, well, you know, there's a, a significant percentage of people that are making up to one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year, and they're shopping at the dollar store. And the answer is, of course, well, like maybe be $125,000 a year in that much money anymore. Well, it's not. And depending on where you live, it's really not. Yeah. Like where we live, that's still pretty good, but yeah. we're not like the rest of the country. Mm-hmm. 
Like there's areas where if you're making that, you're probably like you're you're doing all right, but you're getting by. You're yeah. not like we're in yeah. this like semi rural part of a poor state. Like <laughs> there are cities in this state, like Birmingham or Huntsville. Oh, Huntsville for sure. Huntsville, yeah. like that's a that's a nothing yeah. income. Yeah, you're not you're not getting you're barely getting by. Yeah. 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 Um, so I don't know. I just, yeah. I just thought it was funny. I guess, uh, if you don't have more to say about it, then we can move on. No, to we move to the next thing. Yeah. yeah. It's all good. Um, so there, there's the Apple antitrust, uh, legislation, lawsuit, whatever, um, that's coming around. So this, this was the kind of the crux of my argument with the guy at work is, uh, that, my position is that there has never been an application of antitrust law that benefited consumers uh, ever I mean, in the history of this country. Yeah. That the the real application of antitrust legislation in this country is to benefit either the government or the competition of whoever they're going after. Yeah. And so one of my questions, though, in this particular case is why are they going after Apple? Yeah. No, I have an answer. What do you think? Um, I mean, like I say, I know that Apple traditionally has been pretty good about not let, giving government access to their like back end stuff and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. That would be my guess, but I that's like, what I think it's about. Is that what you think too? Yeah, that's okay. what I think it's about. It's, yeah. it's like, look, you either play ball with us or this is what we can do to you. Yeah. Which is, by the way, is the reason I love Apple products. Like I say, <laughs> I mean, I, I do. I lo- Like I say, I love an iPhone, man. Well, I, one of the things that I that I saw in there was um, that they were one of the big issues is that Apple doesn't allow in the Apple store in the app in the what is it called the app store the, the yeah the I um, forget, yeah yeah the Apple app store on your i device no. um, some competitive products to things that they do yeah. And so that's a problem. They should, you know, allow all these products. Like people have worked well, hard on these apps, and they they should be available. And it's like my first thought was like, well, what about the actual Apple stores? Do they need to be able to? <laughs> they have to sell galaxies. They can't exclusively sell, sell Apple, Apple products, products at the right? Apple store. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what's the difference? Yeah. I mean, this is one of the yeah, limitations that you understand when you buy Apple products. Yeah. Yeah, which by the way, the part of the reason I'm such a big Apple fan is their stuff just works better. Yeah, they're really careful about what they allow in their store in a lot of ways, not yeah. just like um, limiting competitive products. Yeah, because like I say, I mean, I've got, I mean, I, I, I wear an Apple Watch now, and that thing, I mean, it does everything like I would want it to do. And mm-hmm. I've, I've talked to plenty of people that use the Android products, and they're just, they're like, it's just never does what I, it, it's just never right. Yeah. Like it doesn't it's just not as good. Well, one of the one of the decent arguments that I heard was um that you know, there are people that have created have worked hard and put a lot of resources into creating apps that Apple just kind of parodied and made available for free on all of their products. Oh, yeah. And so what about this person? Like that's an unfair business practice. They're driving this person out of business that you know, spent a lot of time and worked hard on this product. And now Apple is, has created a similar product that they just give away for free. Yeah. And I'm like, well, it sucks for that guy. Yeah. But you know what? All of us that buy Apple products, it's yeah. all the better for us. Yeah. That's probably what, part of the reason why we buy Apple products. Yeah. Yeah. Is I that mean, it, the, the reason that it, it, essentially that it seems to me that they're trying to punish a, a, um, a business for doing good business. Yeah. For doing a good job, yeah. you know, for drawing enough customers in, enough yeah. consumers in that want to, that are willing to sacrifice some things that they limit because yeah. they, because they like do the limit product. things. Like there are oh, yeah. things that you just can't get with an iPhone that you can with an Android. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Android people are all like, they're not afraid to rub it in your face about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's fine to me because, like I say, I just, I don't need those things. Uh, Apple will decide when I need that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the, you know, one of the things that, the the guy this is when I got real passionate and loud in the office about this stuff because he's just wrong and I had to had yeah. to try to correct him. Yeah. Um is this myth that uh Rockefeller um okay. with uh the oh with Standard Oil. Okay. All right. So Rockefeller was Standard Oil back way back when. I'm from And this this is um one of those myths of the robber barons, quote unquote. Yes. Yeah. 
All right. So the standard oil, um, they dropped the price of all of their products uh, to push out competitors. Yep. Now they did attempt to do that. No, they didn't. Well, they attempted to. No, they didn't. Oh, really? Yeah. They, there's no evidence that any business has ever, ever yeah. dropped the price of their products purely to push out competition. Yeah. Now, the the story is that Standard Oil dropped the price of their products to where they were taking a loss so yeah. that they could get rid of competition and then raise their prices to monopolistic yeah, prices. Yeah, but my understanding of the of the history there is that that they did that, but every time they went to go raise the prices or they they would drop it to try to eliminate the competition, but then when mm-hmm. the competition was gone and they went to raise the prices, immediately another competitor would move in and undercut them again. Yeah. And that they were just never able to get their to be able to do it. Because that's a that's a better story. I mean that was that was the, that's my understanding of yeah. the history. Now I may not be correct on that. No, uh, it, you're not. But uh, okay. <laughs> but that's a better story. Yeah. Um, the the general myth is that they um, they dropped their prices to the point where they were taking a loss because they had a big um, cash. Because uh, they had the supply to do it, the the capital to do it, right? And yeah. um, and they pushed out all their competition and they raised their prices back up to screw the consumer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not true. There's no yeah. evidence that any business has ever ever yeah. done this. Okay, um, they had lower prices. Yeah, than their competitors because they just were because a, they were a better run business through efficiency, they, yeah, through yeah. efficiency, through managerial tactics, through so forth. They they actually were able to offer their product at a lower price. Yeah. Um there were a whole bunch of managerial innovations that are still used today yeah. um in Standard Oil. Um they actually offered a quality product at a lower price and they didn't throw things away. They they um they developed kerosene. They developed petroleum jelly. They mm-hmm. essentially found uses for the byproducts of the oil production yeah. and sold that too. Yeah. They they were just a better company than yeah. all their competitors. And the antitrust legislation was lobbied for by their competitors because yeah. their competitors couldn't bring their prices down to the level of standard oil. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, so in the end, though, when they broke up standard oil— yeah. um, Prices went up everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, right. It, it didn't benefit the consumer, which is the stated goal of antitrust legislation. Yeah. Is to... It, to um, to drive out monopolies. Yeah, so to that drive out have... non-competitive, to increase competition, drive out non-competitive environments, drive out monopolies so that the consumer can benefit. But that's yeah. never been... That's never happened. Yeah. In, in every case that antitrust legislation has ever been used, it's been used uh, at the expense of the consumer. Yeah. And that was, Standard Oil was another example of that. And even if you take the, the idea um, at its face, okay, so oil production particularly is a high capital investment yeah, um, you got to really business. supply it at, at the front end to make the money on the back end. Right. How long do you think that Standard Oil would have had to take a loss yeah. on every sale they made to drive out their competitors yeah. who had already sunk a lot of money into it? Yeah, right. <laughs> in, in order to develop their business in the first place. Yeah. I'm Decades, at, maybe? Decades. Yeah. I, like I'm, yeah. So even at the low end, I would say eight to 10 years, eight to 10 years of taking a loss on yeah. every sale they make. Yeah. No business can survive that. And- yeah. No board of directors would have... <laughs> would have approved of that, yeah. yeah right. Um, oh, yeah, especially on the idea, well, once we get rid of these guys, we'll make the real money then. Like, right. And um, But like you said, uh, so what happens when they drive out their competitors? Yeah. Now, if they've been taking a loss all this time, they can't buy up the resources of those competitors. They can't buy up the production facilities and so forth because they've been taking a loss all this. They don't have the capital. Yeah, they won't have the capital. Yeah. Um, so what happens when they bring their prices back up? Even if they succeed in yeah. driving out their competitors, yeah. what happens when they bring their prices back up? Immediately somebody else is jumping in. Absolutely. Somebody's yeah. buying the production facilities for somebody that got driven out of business at 60 cents on the dollar yep. and immediately competing with them again. Yeah. Um, there were hundreds of... Hundreds of other companies competing with them when the antitrust legislation was pushed through. Yeah. It's just the whole thing's a lie. Yeah. Um, w- what Standard Oil did was that they reduced the price of oil across yeah. the board because of their good business practices. Yeah. Because of their efficiency and their management. 
Um, same thing with uh, U.S. Steel, Carnegie. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the numbers exactly, but it was something like uh, after the, um, like while they were pushing their business forward and they developed a whole bunch of uh, uh, extra efficiencies in the production of steel and so forth, um, that I don't remember, it was like a decade into U.S. Steel or something like that, that steel was... <clears throat> Um, the price of steel had been reduced to something like six cents on the dollar of what it had been when they started. Wow. <laughs> and it's not because they were taking a loss. It's just because they were running their business better. because they were good at it. And yeah. they enabled the real um, modernization of America. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, both just... of these guys, Carnegie um, yeah. and Rockefeller. You take Rockefeller, away the oil and the steel, they yeah. have a hard time going through the industrial. Energy and steel, <laughs> like their efficiencies, their ability to push prices down and increase um, both the quality and the quantity of the products that they were producing yeah. is what enabled the modernization and the real capital uh, build in this country. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and they're demonized for it. Yeah. So, but those guys were doing this through, through entrepreneurial skill. Yeah. Through innovation and entrepreneurial skill. Yeah. The guys that, that were lobbying for um, legislate for antitrust legislation to break up their competitors, those guys were doing it in a different way. Yeah. They were trying to use government mm -hmm. to improve their competition, yeah. their their competitive advantage. They were using cover government for their competitive advantage instead of appealing to the consumers. And yeah. it's at the expense of the consumers that all this stuff has ever been done. Yeah. And we're going through another revolution now. Like we're in like the technology revolution here. Mm -hmm. And um, information is the key to that. Like all of the metadata and all of this stuff, like that's like for whatever reason, like that's the thing right now, like mm -hmm. is trying to get access to that. And the government's the biggest one that wants it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that I think this deal with Apple, I think it boils down to just that. That, you know, the, the Apple's not wanting to play ball with the government and the government's like, well, we have, you know, what's the, all the same? We have threats. Yeah. Yeah. We have ways to do this. We have six yeah. ways from Sunday to yeah. take you down. like <laughs> so. Make you an offer you can't refuse. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's what I think's going on here. I guess time, or, time will tell as this plays out. Yeah. It's that very mafia aspect of government, the... Um, I, I love the Dave Smith thing that, you know, government is the mafia masquerading as a human rights organization. Yes, that this, is, this is a perfect example right here. Yeah. They're saying, well, you know, we want to improve the uh, competition to, um, to, you know, to better the consumer's position, I guess. Yeah. Um, but the truth is that prices will probably go up. Yeah. They're, well, the they're truth acting is, on behalf is that the, of, the consumer is, is winning right now. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, it's the it's the consumer that's the reason that Apple has done so well. Exactly. Yeah, um, and so it's one of those uh, situations where they're like, well, uh, you know, it sure would be a shame if we, you know, if we would have to break up your company into a bunch of smaller parts. Yeah. Um, it sure would be a shame, you know. Of course, you could just give us the information that you want that exactly. we want. Exactly. Exactly. And and that's ex that's how I see this. Yeah. That, that's that's what I see too. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Like I said, I'm a big fan of Apple products. I hope the government doesn't step in and screw it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the, the funny thing is that um, it's not like they're subsidizing Apple. And yeah. the and the truth is that no no business that's ever getting government subsidies is ever held for antitrust legislation because they're yeah. already on board. <laughs> All right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're not hauling Elon Musk in for any of this. Yeah, the only mo monopoly that persists uh, without um, government uh, government support yeah. is a monopoly that exists because the product that's offered and the price that's offered is better than anybody else can do. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, in a true free market, like the the market will weed out the the. Uh, monopolies. Yeah. Like there just, there well, just won't be monopolies unless they actually offer the best product at the best price. Well, in, in which case who's complaining? Exactly. The government. <laughs> exactly. Well, their competitors, that's who's complaining. Well, the competitor, and, yeah. and the competitors are using the government to get their way. Yeah, that's true. That that's what antitrust legislation is mostly used for. Yeah, no, I agree. So. Um, all right. If anybody's got some alternative examples, send them to me. Yeah. I don't think you can produce it, but we'll see. I'll, I'll research it. 
Yeah. If you send it to me, I'll research it. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you why you're wrong on the next podcast. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna look in the standard oil myself because I thought I knew the history of there. Yeah. I, I actually like the my friend at the office, I was like, you need to read more about this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I find all that stuff fascinating. Mm-hmm. So I mean Yeah, um the like all of the antitrust legislation that has been used has actually resulted in a reduction in competition in the industry. Yeah. Uh Every single example in the history of the U.S., it has always ended up in a reduction in competition, a lowering of quality of product, and an increase in price. Yeah. It has never benefited the consumer. Yeah. There you go. That's your government for you. Yep. Always on your side. That's right. (laughs) As long as you've got a lot of money to give to them. Yep. And uh, and that's why they shouldn't have the power in the first place. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Um, it's not that you got to get money out of politics. You got to get politics out of money. Yeah, no, that's 100%. That's, mm-hmm. that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's go ahead and wrap up. Um, that wasn't bad for no notes at all, really. <laughs> Just a list of uh, things to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, we, let's see, when is this? this is, all right. Yeah, we're good. Um, as far as I know, we should be back next week as normal. As far as I know, I'm um, good. And, uh, yeah, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Like and share, comment, subscribe. You can always um, contact me at michael at Um, You know, you can leave reviews, and that's appreciated too. And uh, all those other things. And and if we're consistent enough for long enough, then we'll our audience will build back up and then we'll miss an episode and we'll lose a third of our audience. Like it happens every time. Yeah. I don't know. I don't understand how this works exactly. You guys are really fickle out there. man. One episode, <laughs> miss one episode, lose a third of the audience. It's incredible. Yeah. They'll be back. It takes so long though. <laughs> yeah. It's like we're replaced so quickly. Yeah. That's yeah, easy so to do, quickly. man. I don't understand why we're obviously better than everybody else. Clearly, but... But um, we will be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.